What's up guys, it's Sam here. Uh, I forgot to mention in my last video, my background looks different. That's because I just moved into a new apartment. It's slightly bigger than my last one and only like three buildings away. So not a drastic change, but if you're wondering why it looks different, um, that's why. It's so dark in here, I don't even know if anyone's gonna be able to see that. So yesterday morning, I woke up to an email saying I now have access to GitHub Copilot. Just funny because I don't even remember registering for it. But I spent the day messing around with it, getting familiar with it. So in this video, I wanted to give a little demonstration about it. First, we're gonna be talking about what GitHub Copilot is, why you'd wanna use it, and then we're gonna be looking at a live demonstration of it. Guys, if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, if you wanna connect with other developers, make sure to join the Keep On Coding Discord server. Link to that down in the description. So this is copilot.github.com and it gives a technical preview of GitHub Copilot. So they're calling it an AI pair programmer. So as you're writing your code, it's gonna be giving you suggestions for either lines of code or entire functions right inside the editor. And if you do wanna sign up for the waitlist, you could just click here and sign up via your GitHub username. So how it works is you can either leave a comment or write your signature method and it'll give you a suggestion based on the context of what you wrote. And from what I was reading, it doesn't actually have like a database where it will look up this code. It's generating the code on the fly. So here it says it was trained on billions of lines of public code. And the main purpose of it is to save you time while you're coding. So GitHub Copilot is available as an extension or plugin for NeoVim, JetBrains, Visual Studio, and Visual Studio Code. And I'm sure they're going to expand it to more editors. It works with several frameworks and languages. So Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, Java, but it says that it understands dozens of languages. So if we scroll down here, we see um, convert comments to code, write a comment describing the logic you want and let GitHub Copilot assemble the code for you. It autofills repetitive code for you. It uh, writes tests for you. So now you don't really have an excuse not to write unit tests anymore. If you don't like the suggestion it gives you, it allows you to choose alternatives. So you can iterate through the different suggestions and then accept the one that you like. If you're using some kind of new language or framework, you don't have to go through and learn all the specifics. You could simply write something like fetch tweets from users and it'll autofill that code for you. It can autofill repetitive code. So say you want to run a bunch of tests. I think we're all guilty of we just write it once and then we copy it a bunch of times and then we have to go through and individually change each test, which can be pretty tedious. So the fact that this can do this almost instantly is uh, pretty awesome. So on paper, this sounds really amazing. Let's look at some of the negatives. How will GitHub Copilot get better over time? So here it says GitHub Copilot doesn't actually test the code it suggests. So the code might not even compile or run. GitHub Copilot can only hold a very limited context. So even single source files longer than a few hundred lines are clipped and only the immediately preceding context is used. They may suggest deprecated use of libraries and languages, and it only uses the current file as context. So it doesn't use any other files in your project, but they said that this is something that they're gonna improve on in the future. All right, so that's a brief overview of what GitHub Copilot is. Let's go ahead and install it into our text editor and start using it. So like I mentioned, several editors have support for this. We are gonna be using IntelliJ. So the first thing we need to do is create a new project. I'm just gonna choose all the general settings. I'm gonna call it GitHub Copilot. And then hit finish. All right, so over in our source folder, we're going to create a new Java class and call it main. Now, if we want to install GitHub Copilot as a plugin, we'd go to file, settings, plugins, and we could just type in GitHub and it should pop up here. So we see the third one is GitHub Copilot and then you would just simply install it. I already have it installed here. So I'm just gonna hit okay. Now we have the extension installed, but we don't actually have access to it yet. So now you'd wanna to go to tools and you should now have a entry here for GitHub Copilot and we click log in to GitHub. Now at this point you'd hit copy and open and then it'll ask you to log into your GitHub account and it'll just verify that you do have access to this. Again, I've already registered, so I'm gonna hit cancel. All right, so at this point uh, it should start working. So if we wanna just go ahead and hit enter and we see that it, yeah, it gives us a suggestion here for public static void main. If we don't wanna use it, we could just hit escape. If we do wanna use it, we could just hit tab. 
So it recognizes that the, this is a main class and you need a main function in here. It just has very generic boilerplate code. So let's give it a little bit more context here. Let's say we want to write a function to add two numbers. So yeah, now it gives us a suggestion of two parameters and it just returns the addition of the two. So now at this point, since it does have context to the file, it says, hey, you already have an add function here. I'm going to assume that you want a subtraction one. So that's pretty cool. I see how you know it could save a lot of time for us here. This add and return a plus b, uh, I don't know why you'd ever want to do something like this. So let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's say we want to, given two dates, we want to calculate the difference in days between those dates. So we can give a signature method and we'll call it calculate days between dates. And as we see here, it does, it gives us a start date and end date, and it gives us a suggestion to return the difference. Now, say for whatever reason, we don't like this suggestion. We can look at all the different suggestions by hitting Alt Enter. And then we go down to Open GitHub Copilot. Now this is gonna open up a new tab and it's gonna give us all the suggestions here. It looks like there are seven or eight suggestions and you can just you know go through and, and pick the one we want the most. So say we like solution five, we'll just double click on that. And um, yeah, there it is. Now there's also a shortcut to iterate through the different solutions. On a Mac, it would be option and the close brackets. On Windows, it would be alt and close bracket. So if we hit alt, close bracket, we see that it will basically iterate through the different solutions. It's only giving us two solutions for this, but just a shortcut there if you don't want to open up the window. So the last thing I want to look at is, as I mentioned, you can generate methods with comments. So let's try that. Let's do something like get getting the second largest number from a list. So we'll say return the second largest number from a list of integers. All right, we'll hit enter. Let's scroll down. And here we go. It generates a solution here. Say we don't, we, you know, we want to look at another solution. We hit alt close brackets. Gives us another solution. Say we like this one. We hit tab to accept. Now, again, like they said, this code, it's not tested. It doesn't guarantee that it'll even run. So just like any code that you would copy and paste into your editor, make sure, uh, make sure you look over it and make sure that it's actually doing what you want it to do. All right, so there you have it. That's a general overview of GitHub Copilot. So what are my thoughts? Honestly, I'm really impressed. Uh, this is something that, you know, I thought I would just take a look at it and just you know, use it for this video, but I've, I think I'm probably gonna leave it installed for now. It'll be interesting to see how it works on a larger project. You know, the examples that we did here were very generic, but yeah, like I said, overall, it, you know, for this being version one, not even, it, it still seems like it's still in beta. It'll be interesting to see how much smarter this can get. Obviously there's the concern of, you know, is this gonna take programmers jobs? I don't know, <laughs> I, I don't think anyone knows, but I think really what it's good for now is just, it takes up the time of Googling something. So instead of going to my browser and being like, you know, calculate days between dates, I could just do it straight in the editor and it generates the code. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, it's, it's only gonna get smarter. I'm sure GitHub isn't the only company that's working on this. I'm sure a lot of other companies are or will have something similar. But again, just as a tool to help me program day to day, I would, something that I would definitely use. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you would use in your own code or in your you know day to day coding. And also, uh, if you have any concerns that this could potentially take programmer jobs. And if you do want to try GitHub Copilot out, uh, make sure you get on the wait list. I believe it took me about a month until I gained access, but I'm sure as they roll it out to more and more people, that wait list will hopefully the uh, wait will be shorter. So thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on coding.